Warning, this epic disaster is an adult podcast for adults and covers adult subject matter. The podcast hosts, Sherry and Rick, often use words that are not appropriate for children and other sensitive humans. Words such as nipple, taint, rectify, and... Dang it, where is that? Where's what? What are you looking for? That word. What word? That other inappropriate word you gave me. It was right here. You mean clitoris? Yeah, that's it. It was just right here. Why can't I find it? Wait, you can't find the clitoris? No. What is that thing? (sighs) And now for this epic disaster. Listener discretion is advised. Why are you talking like that? Welcome to this epic disaster. No, bra. Totally. Yeah. Oh my god. Hi. Hi. How's everybody doing? Good. How are you? How I'm is, awesome. How is, how's Rick? Awesome. Awesome. I don't know. <laughs> I've been better. Yeah. I'm stressed out is what I'm doing. We've all been better. I think we should try to do a little beer review right about now. Start I'm, one I'm anyway. I'm down. Oh man. Did you just belch I, it wasn't a belch what is that thing where it's not really a belch it's kind of like sort of like hiccup but not i don't know there should be a word for it have we had this Squelch. beer before no are you sure you say that at every beer that we have you anymore say we've had they're all before. starting to kind of fade well here's why other. because i buy like five of them at a time and then you go in there and read them and you get familiar with it and then you forget about it and then when it's time for we're, we're going to actually have it then you're like oh i remember this beer you're right you're like, absolutely yeah you remember because you read it like Three weeks ago. 100% correct, Rick. As normal, as usual, as always. So today we're going to try, for our live beer review, a beer called Mountain Jam. (laughs) It is fresh, clean, light, and totally crushable. You know, uh, a a fun thing to do is when someone says something, and just just at random, just just say Mountain Jam. Mountain Jam. (laughs) Why is that funny? That's the thing. Act like that they're saying something dirty. I'm going to start funny. doing that in business meetings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like uncontrollable laughter. And then the people are like, what? What's just start wrong? giggling. Did I say oh something God. dirty? And just like, <laughs> like you can't help laughing. Like I can't help it. And then they're going to be confused. And they're going to try to figure out why you're laughing. It's a very immature thing to do. Or they're going to have me drug tested. Uh, by the way, the um, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead and tell the fine folks out there who listen to this epic disaster. Uh, What we're having at this uh, important moment in our lives, this yellow beer. Mountain jam. (laughs) (laughs) You just just totally fucked that up. (laughs) It's by Southbound Brewing Company in Mm -hmm. Savannah, here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. It says, what's better than warm sunshine on your face on a crisp mountain day? Cool sunshine on my face. I can think of other things on your face. Hey, hey, (laughs) it's too early for that. We just started the (laughs) podcast. And you're always talk. You're already talking about things on your face, like you know, moisturizer. Yeah, go ahead. What? Hmm? The addition of some fine tunes and a great uh, beer in your hand. Southbound presents Mountain Jam. Mountain Jam. Our Southern dry hopped lager with the refreshing taste you crave. <laughs> Citra, Amarilla, and uh, ca- sorry, Cascade hops lend this brew its heady citrus aroma. To cr- <laughs> I said head. Wow. We should not be given microphones. <laughs> no one should give us a microphone. Ever, ever. This craft lager is like no other. It's light bodied. It's, it's light bodied, but doesn't skimp on flavor, making it the perfect beer for soaking up the rays, whether in the foothills of the Rockies or on an Appalachian peak. Mountain Jam will be the perfect addition to your retreat. Lager. 
That was, I, that it rhymed. smells really hoppy. That rhymed. To it's because it is. I know. I'm not. This is. This is. Uh, I don't know. It's also five percent volume. Five percent alcohol by volume. <laughs> All right. Five percent volume I try by it. alcohol. Here I go. Or something. It try smells it. a little. Um, Drink it. It smells like pet juice. Like a pet, little bit. Pet juice. Yeah. Like yeah. what? Toffee's bath water. No, just like. Uh, do you ever go outside? Sometimes you smell cat potty outdoors. Yes. It smells like that. Oh, great! It smells like cat piss. Like feral cat piss. It's a little pineapple. Okay. It smells like pineapple. Yeah. Okay. Pineapple jam. That's what they should have called it. Pineapple. Mountain jam. Jamming on the mountain. All right. How are uh, you? Um, what's happening? What's going on? And what's happening with Rick? How, ho- how's Rick? Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold on. Hold the phone. I'm getting, I'm getting a psychic vibe. All right, so... I want you to cut these cards. Don't show me the card. I want you to cut the cards wherever you want. You just got to- done telling me to hold my phone. Cut them wherever you want. Let me put my phone down. Any place in the deck. <laughs> you said deck. Um, and just cut them. And don't show me the card. Just. All right. That's Excuse called me. shuffling. That's not really cutting, but it'll work. That's good. Put that there. Top on the... There you go. All right. So now I'm going to tell you what this card is. Okay. That's the top card for those of you that can't see what he just pointed at. I'm feeling a three. I'm I'm feeling a three of spades. Three of spades. Okay. I'll have a look. I feel pretty strongly about that. It's a ten of clubs. Not even close. The only thing you got right was the color. Sorry. My turn. You, you're not psychic at all. I think I am. Cut you're those not, cards. No, do this, it. This is ridiculous. There's no. You you don't have any psychic. Do it. Ability. I eight am of diamonds. Eight thinking of diamonds. Eight it of is diamonds. the Queen of Hearts. It's eight of diamonds. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so, I, it would, I almost, because I said three of spades, and that's the two of spades. If that had shown up, see, maybe I was getting that vibe that that's the one I was going to pick. I You're, bet that's what it was. Sometimes, you know, you, don't, you can't predict psychic ability. Sometimes it comes out in the future. Sometimes it's like close to something. So I just feel like that maybe I'm a, I was a little unfocused. You're so full of shit is what you are. Speaking of full of shit, let's do a little would you rather. Okay. Uh, I'm going to drop a stone, which right. I'm pretty sure is going to be a blue one, and here I'm shaking it up. Yeah. Just like Taylor Swift. Shaking I've never it. shaken up Taylor Swift before, but I bet you I could. All right, here's a blue one. It's red. All right, so red stands for feet. Feet. <laughs> That's what I almost said, fane and peer. These fane and peer. <laughs> we have a foot question for you. <laughs> How much do you know about your own feet? Okay, so would you rather mm-hmm. be on top of a Ferris wheel during Hello. an earthquake? I wonder what that's like. Scary as fuck. All my friends out in California have been freaking out with these earthquakes that have been going on. Same. I don't know if any of them were in, on a Ferris wheel, but... That would suck. I was... All right. This, okay. oh, all right. Go. No, really. Go ahead. It's I'm fine. just going to say there was uh, maybe a couple months ago, uh-huh. there was, a, there was a, uh, an earthquake here in Georgia, and I was on the toilet. <laughs> so I, I got up. It was like 4.30 or 5 in the morning, and... So I'm doing toilet things, and I just, and I've never felt an earthquake before. Right. And I just felt like wobbling on the floor, and I was just like, that feels like, was that an earthquake? It felt like an earthquake. And then I went to bed, and then I got up, and I looked on Facebook, and everybody's talking about earthquake. I felt it. I felt the earthquake. You had an earthquake while pooping. I thought it was actually uh, something in me at first. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't. No, it was not. All right, on top of a Ferris wheel during a an earthquake, earthquake, or or taking a dump on top of a Ferris wheel, which <laughs> might be more fun. I don't know. Can I get this question out? I hope so. Would you rather be on top of a Ferris wheel during an earthquake or during an electrical storm? On top of a, a Ferris wheel a during Ferris an wheel electrical storm. storm. No, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, I'll pick the I'll pick the Ferris wheel. No. <laughs> It's Ferris wheel for both of them. Would you rather be on a, on top of the Ferris wheel during an earthquake yes. or an electrical storm? No. Okay, that's all you had to say. That's what I meant. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that one, even though none would be really 
one that I would want. I think if I'm on a Ferris wheel and I feel an earthquake, I would think it was part of the ride. I wouldn't even know. But if you're up high and, and lightning's hitting, I don't think you want to be up there. Do you know you know how much I like roller coasters, right? Uh, okay. I mean, I've had you know sure. season tickets to Six Flags, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And you know how much I hate them, right? Mm-hmm. So I actually really enjoy roller coasters. I cannot go on a Ferris wheel. Really it scares the shit out of me. I not that I've been on a Ferris wheel, but I don't feel like it'd be something I'd be that scared of. I well, don't know. You're not like strapped in. Oh, then no. There's just this tiny bar across the front, but you can just slide right under it. It's not anywhere near you. It doesn't hold you into the seat. That's what. That's the way I have sex. I have a tiny bar in front of me that holds me in. That you could slide under? Yeah. I mean, that's, like I found that boat? that's the best best way. Yeah. <laughs> My sexual technique. It's, my turn. it's called the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel. All right. What are you going to drop? Green? No. Yellow. All right. <laughs> All right. This is random. Uh, would you rather give up TV for the rest of your life? <laughs> <laughs> what? All right. Me? Or give up music for the rest of your life? Wow. Now, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question about that question. Okay. Let's say you're watching Doctor Hugh. Doctor Who. Doctor Hugh. You, what, you Doctor, decided. Doctor Hugh is like the spinoff of mm, Doctor Who. It's a, yeah. just like he's lying right. the whole time. It's a, Hugh stupid. Grant did that one. Yeah, um, I would say let's let's just say that you decided you're going to give up music and you're watching Doctor Who. Can do, you don't get to hear the soundtrack? You don't right. get to hear oh, when commercials come on. You don't get to hear. Right. You hear the words, but you don't hear any music. Is that the way it works? I don't know. I don't know. You asked me the question. Well, I know, but I'm just thinking you can watch TV or music. But then I'm thinking, what if there's music on TV? Do you get to experience that or not? I don't. I think know. you should write to when, to the Zamana people. Yes. <laughs> We're and, confused. And once once we hear back from them, I will answer that question. We should really do that. We're confused about this question. What yes. does it mean? I think we should. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, pick one. Oh, I thought we were going to wait till we heard back from them. No, you have to pick. Then we can we can write to them later. One, TV, music. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm about to show how addicted I am. I know. I would rather give up music. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you can hear music by TV. Then it's fine. Yeah, then you just listen I to everything. Just put it on the music channel. Yeah, that's what I would do. Okay. So. Well, uh, guess what? Now, I... What? I have a present for you. What? I... You have a present for me? Yeah, I got this uh, uh, like three weeks ago, and I forgot that I got it. Nice. And it's Surprise been, present. I know. And then it's been sitting down, and then, and then I finally saw it, and I was like, crap, I meant to give this, and I forgot. It's not perishable, is it? Uh, potentially. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, anyway, it, this is sort of a present that kind of, um, refers to a discussion we had before. Okay. In the podcast. Too long ago for people to remember? Or? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. All right. Um, you ready for it? Hold I your am. hands out. Close your eyes. Hold your hands out. Close your eyes. Here's your present. There Thank it is. Thank you. There you go. I'm looking at it. Mm-hmm. I see it. It's a safety tool. For the car. I said tool. So basically, this is in regard to my fear of falling in the water. In going my off car, a bridge going in Going off car. a bridge in my car. Yes. And going into the water. So you bought me, like, mm-hmm. a, clearly from a dollar store. Yes. A, um, a... No, not from a dollar store, by the way. <laughs> a tool. That was full price from Ace Hardware. 16 bucks I spent on you. It's a seatbelt cutter. Yes. Slash window breaker. Right. So it has this little button you push and it goes Bang. with this little metal piece that's supposed to break the window. I wonder if you put window. it on somebody's butt and do it. If it like, like, it's like a shot. Like, I don't oh. know. But then it also has this little knife that you can cut mm-hmm. your seatbelt. Yeah. Cause, cause sometimes so you put it on you your key ring. So you you put it on your key ring. And so here's the thing. You're going off of the bridge into the water and you're like, no problem. I'll just pull my keys out, and you do that, and then you're like, "Here I go. I'm going to cut my seatbelt now, and I'm going to poke my windshield." So okay, so this is this is problematic for me. The um, small graphics on the front of this package mm-hmm. are giving me anxiety. Oh, because they're going over the water. Yeah. yeah, they're giving me anxiety. Well, you know, there's a hurricane on the way. Not, and- it's not going to hit us. I think we'll get the residual effects. And so there could be some flooding. You never know. You might end up being in the water and you just keep this in your car. You'll always be safe. You never have to worry about it. Okay. I will do that. Uh-huh. I'm going to put like a little hook 
in the car and then just hang this from it because yeah. I don't want it on my keys. <laughs> Why? Because it's bulky. All right. Well, when you're dying, you're going to be like, I wish I hadn't done that. So if it happens and I'm in somebody else's car and That's this is sitting in my car, I'll be like, damn it. I know. Why yeah. didn't I put that on my keys? Why didn't I buy them a tool? <laughs> That's what you'll be saying. You said tool. 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 Do you say tool or tool? Tool. T o o l. Tool. 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 <laughs> it's a tool. If you say tool over and over and over, it starts not making any sense at tool, all. Tool. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make After any sense. After a while, it's like, what word am I saying? What is that word? Am I saying I'm too old? I don't know. I mean, that's what you heard. Something like that. Okay. So, so that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'm I'm now, you know what's going to happen, though? You're going to die. You jinxed me. I know. You're going to have to use it. And now I'm going to find myself in the water. I'm wishing that you had it. and you... No, you'll be thanking me. You'll... Thanks, Rick. God, he thinks about me at Target. Hey, I want to um, I want to do a, uh, a thank you of my own. Kind of a recognition, not a thank you, sort of. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, over, I, I was down in your neighborhood, uh-huh. uh, Grant Park, which I guess now it's kind of my neighborhood. That's where my studio is. I got a new studio. You, you can't own it yet. You've only been there for a little while. True. In Grant Park. So I was in Grant Park, your, your uh, neighborhood yes, my area neighborhood. Mm-hmm. of Atlanta. Yep. It's where I bought that. Okay. Little thing there. Mm-hmm. Grant Park Market. Grant Park Market. Have you been there? You... Several times. It's it's blocks from my house. It's a cool little place, isn't it? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, went in there, got lunch. Mm-hmm. So it's almost, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. You walk in. It's not like a full, big, huge, gigantic grocery store. No, it's just a market. It's almost like a, a convenience store, but like four times as big. Yeah. And it has frozen objects and you can get produce. wine, beer, uh, food, dinner, whatever. And then it has like a little deli, a little yep. restaurant. Yep. You can you can eat in mm-hmm. there if you want to. You can. Um, and they have a good selection of products for when you're like almost to the house and you're like, shit, I don't have anything for dinner. Yeah. I'm going to run in and grab something uh-huh. um, that I can take home and make. And veggie food. Yeah. Yeah. Good veggie food. Mm-hmm. And their ice cream selection is amazing. Yeah, I think I got something I shouldn't have got there. But anyway, they, um, uh, cause I'm trying not to eat ice cream, but when it gets so hot. Yeah. I so, so right there at Grant it. Park Market, uh-huh. um, that's at the, at the, um, entrance to the Lumen, which is the new, that's that whole oh, okay. shopping area is called the Lumen. So mm-hmm. there's new restaurants in there. There's a new ramen place in there. <sighs> What? It's right next to Grand Park Market. I'm surprised you didn't see it. Uh-oh. There's also a fire um, a, a fire pizza place in there. Okay. Wood fire pizza. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, a place called the Concession Room or something like that. Okay. Uh, it's another restaurant. But it's right. And then the next building over is where My Salon Suites is. And what My Salon Suites is, is it's a, it's a very large building with a bunch of tiny little suites in it that you can rent as, uh, you know, either a hairstylist or an esthetician or a masseuse. And the rent is much cheaper than it would be if you had to rent out an entire building or an Mm -hmm. entire space. And it's just enough for you. Because, you know, a lot of these places, a lot of hairdressers and whatnot, they rent a chair. Yeah. And so they have to pay that rent anyways. But then they have to deal with other people. Yeah. Here, that space is yours. And it's about the same amount of rent. I'm thinking of getting uh, into waxing. I'm going to start my own waxing shop. Um, a shop. You're going to start doing Brazilians? Sure. Okay. And Portuguese and no, Koreans. I don't not. care. Just a little, whoever walks in. <laughs> I don't care. I'll do it all. Um, here's what I suspect about this. Not, this is a tangent. I don't go too far into it. But I think that um, I think that that might not be as uh, pleasant um, as it might sound. Doing waxings for yes. other people? Yes. It's really not. I wouldn't think so. I've had people do waxes on me before. Well, I know. And but some of the positions they have to tell you to get into. I know. Just doesn't. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. Mm-mm. And not everybody's going to be like, you know, I'm going to uh, get a wax. I might as well have a shower first. Not everyone's going to Not gonna everyone's going to do that. Those people. Some people are going to be like, I just did hot yoga. Now I'm going to oh, go get a Brazilian. man. Yeah. I did hot wo- yoga last week and haven't had a shower since. Right. And I drank oh. a lot last night. Oh, no. So. All right. So, uh, yeah, maybe I won't start that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Grand Park Market. If uh, It's a cool little place. I'm going to go back. 
it was neat. It was in. Uh, it was. I mean, when I say neat, it was um, stylish. It's stylish. It's uh-huh. very clean and very clean. Um, and I don't know. It's just nice. It got the stuff you need. Nice people too. Uh, and they didn't buy uh, an advertisement with us. Nope. <laughs> but we're still telling them. I mean, well, it's by my house. Yeah. I have to kind of, you know, plug everything by my house. Mm-hmm. So, um, something interesting happened to me today. Oh yeah. Just a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like before we came up here to to record. Oh, you got a wax? No. Oh. No. Um, we had let the puppers have some uh, bones to chew on. Yes, we did. We gave them, what are they, like calf, um, no, cow hooves or something like that? I, I Something like that, yeah. Okay. I get it at the um, Asian market. <laughs> that's that's pretty broad, but okay. Well, it's, um, it's the market with mostly uh, with a lot of groceries and foods geared towards the Asian community. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are these, these cow hooves mm-hmm. that are frozen. They're not hooves. They're cow feet. They're feet. Yeah. So it's not the, it's not the hoof. It's not the hooves. It's the other part. Like the meat. Yeah. So there's more cartilage. meat and more cartilage. Not the hooves themselves are like, you know, fingernails. Right. It's not that something. part. No, it's not. So we give them each one. Yes. And toffee being toffee. You know, is 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 working on hers pretty good. She uh, she can eat one of them puppies in Quickly. no time flat. Yeah. So Keely is barely looking at hers. Mm. Buddha is slowly savoring his, mm. and Toffee's going to town. Yep. So I have to make sure that I watch her when she eats anything like that, and mm-hmm. take it from her when it becomes too small, mm-hmm. so that she doesn't choke on it. So I see that it's getting a little smaller. That's what she said. And I. <laughs> And then I go to uh, to take it from her, uh, so I can throw it out, and she won't drop it because she doesn't understand what "drop it" means. Right, especially if it's a bone. Right. So I did something stupid. Um, you ate it. No. Oh, I don't know. I stuck my hand in her mouth. Oh yeah, that'll while, do it. While sure. she was chewing on bone and cartilage. Because <laughs> basically, meat. Uh, that's a description of your finger. Yeah. Bone, cartilage, and meat. Right. So. Have you ever have you ever had that instance where either a bone or a joint is being strained or stressed to the point where you're like, if it goes any further, it's going to snap? Maybe. Like for like a split second, you think that? Maybe. And then you, you get free of it? That's okay. what it felt like. Mm-hmm. That's, I, for a split second, I thought I, my thumb is about to break. She's going <laughs> she's gonna to take it off. No, not take it off, but bust it. Oh. And um, and just as I thought that, like for that fraction of a second, then I got my hand out of there and I got the bone away from her. I bet she didn't know the difference, though. I really. bet she didn't. But um, I mean, oh, she wouldn't bite me. No, she's you know? like, you put it she's in my just, mouth, though. I mean, yeah, again. I'm I'm chewing, mm-hmm. and you stuck your thumb in my mouth. Yeah, um, idiot. So uh, so I pull my hand out and I take the bone from her, and I'm like, okay, I got it. And I'm like, damn, she bit me. And I'm looking at my knuckle. And because one of her teeth went directly into the top of my knuckle on my thumb, uh-huh. and it's this huge dent, right? And then I can see one of her other teeth on the side of my thumb, and I'm sitting there going, "Wow, she almost broke the skin." And then I flip my thumb over. I you bleeding everywhere. And I'm bleeding all over the place. Oh no. She uh, she did break the skin. Um, she she, you. she got me good. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a nice little gash on the underside of my thumb, on the fatty part of my thumb, but it's also very close to the crease. Yeah. And uh, and it, it it's a good little gash. It's a couple centimeters, mm-hmm. um, and so I'm bleeding all over, and I gotta go clean it. And I'm thinking, great, I had my hand mm-hmm. on this cow foot, yeah, in a dog's mouth. You're gonna get mad cow rabies. And now, <laughs> That's now exactly I have this right. open gash in my thumb. Um, so I go over to the sink. I'm just washing it, you know, and it's really starting to kind of sting and, and hurt a bit, and it's it's a little swollen, a little bruised. And uh, I'm washing it, and then I flip it over, and I noticed she did actually break the skin on yep. the top of the knuckle. Uh-oh. It's broken there too. She so went all the way through. So she got me. Well, she didn't go all the way through, but she got me on both sides. And uh, yeah, it's it's sore. You're gonna remember that for a while. I'm I'm gonna remember to never stick my thumb in my <laughs> dog's mouth again while she's chewing on a bone. Yeah, she um, not, She it wasn't her fault. And what did you say? You were like. Mom, that something tasted really good there for a second. <laughs> She's like, that bone was like a nice little taste for a I, second. I found a like little real a meat little there. yummy in there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. She didn't mean to do it. But though. now she's got a taste for your blood, so you better look out. Yep. Yep. The middle of the night. I better look out. <laughs> Chew your face off. 
Thankfully, she can't get into the bedroom. So. Yeah, you got to watch out now. She'll so now I, I used a little peroxide on it. I got a. She's she's celebrating. She's there. celebrating. Yes. Right. Use a little peroxide on it. I put a, a band aid on it, but uh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, you maybe you get shots. You're gonna have to get shots. No, what I'm just gonna soak you, uh, it in neosporin for a few weeks. You get bitten by a dog. It'll be fine. You, you never know. So you know, I I did decide to go ahead and look up some facts, like what what do you do for dog bite? And okay. I have I you have bite them back. Well, I mean obviously, but I have seven facts here. Seven facts. They're quick. About dog bites. So actually, it's seven steps to treating a dog bite. Okay. Now this can probably. Uh, relate to tiny dog bites like I have or like if some rando dog comes up and tries to take your leg off. Right. Um, it says, you know, press on the wound gently to cause some bleeding because you want the blood to come out. That's what it's for. To cleaning, help cleaning flush out, out the bacteria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Step two, you're going to want to wash it with mild soap and water. If you can. Which I did. Mm -hmm. Which I did. I used the Myers. What do you do if you're out in the middle of nowhere? I mean, some dog bites you and you're, you're walking somewhere. Got to find a place to you wash it? Spit on it? Ooh. I don't know. Potty? Yeah, don't pee on, pee on it. it. Don't know. Uh, I don't gross. know. They do that for jelly sting, jellyfish stings. Yeah. You're supposed to urinate on it. Yeah. Would you urinate on me if I got stung by a jelly bean? I jelly would, bean? I would <laughs> urinate on you if you didn't. I if would... I got stung by a jelly bean. <laughs> a jelly <I> bean. <laughs> Why are you peeing on that woman? She was stung by a jelly bean. <laughs> All right. We're taking you away. Or she just away, really likes you. it. Or she just really likes it. <laughs> it's her hobby. It's, it's she's. This is what she's into. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, number three, you uh, slow the bleeding with a clean cloth. Okay. I did that as well. You did. Mm -hmm. uh, next step, apply over-the-counter antibiotic cream, if you have it. What now, is that, like neosporin yes, kind of stuff? Or yeah, like triple, triple antibiotic ointment sure. that you can get anywhere. Gold bond. Um, no. <laughs> Gold Bond. Gold Bond makes a, a antibiotic ointment. Yes. Oh, do they really? Yes. Okay. Well, um, I didn't do that because I didn't think about it. Well, we got some. I think I can go find it. I'll have to dress it again in a minute. But uh, so that's the next step. And then you want to wrap the wound in a sterile bandage. Uh, keep the wound bandaged and see your doctor. Uh-oh. Now, I'm not going to the doctor unless it looks like it's getting infected. Or you start foaming at the mouth. Tomorrow you'll be brushing your teeth and you'll go, oh my God. Oh, wait a minute. I'm brushing I'm my brushing teeth. brushing my teeth. Yeah. And then step six, change the bandage several times a day once your doctor has examined the wound. That seems like a waste. They're like reiterating the fact that I need to go to the doctor. <laughs> they keep pointing that out. Yeah. And <laughs> the ar article is written by a doctor. And step number seven. <laughs> Make sure you see the doctor. Yes. Step number seven, watch for signs of infection, including redness, swelling, increased pain, and fever. Now, uh, this is where I would put, and if you see those things, go to the go doctor. To the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> um, what will your doctor do? Do you want to know what the doctor's going to do? Uh, it's going to, all those things that it told you to do, that the you doctor's just going to do. That's and exactly what he's going to do. The doctor's going to make you take your pants off while it's being done. It literally says right here, after they ask you questions about the dog that bit you and how it happened, they will likely clean the wound again, mm -hmm. apply antibiotic ointment, and prescribe antibiotics such as Augmentin if there is a concern of infection. What if the doctor will call the doctor? Doctors have to call doctors sometimes. Yeah. yeah. What, what, is, what should I do, doctor? And the doctor's like, oh, well, we got to call the doctor. Now, it does say that your doctor may give you a booster shot of your tetanus vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, and mind you, <laughs> I haven't had a tetanus shot right. is, since probably 1990-something. Yeah, it's, it's run out by now. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, um, I'm going to keep an eye on my thumb. <laughs> and I'll keep you updated. Uh, this may be a solo podcast starting next week. <laughs> we will see. We'll all kind of uh, wait and see what happens. But she didn't mean it. No. No, not at all. Um, okay, I got some questions. I got a question for you. I got a dilemma. I got a, a, a question uh, I was thinking about today. Okay. And I want to know what you think about this. What's that? It's a relationship question. You know, we've both been in different kind of relationship. We've both been in a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say we're relationship experts. No. Well, we I am. We've well, we have experience in relationships that I think we could share with the regular person. That's true. <laughs> like we're not regular people. No, we're, um, we're stars. But I have, um, I have a, I have a question for you. What? All right. Uh, this is after being in a, a, a relationship for at least five years, long-term relationship. Let's say you're in a long-term relationship at least five years. Uh -huh. Which of these changes 
in your mate, the person you're in the relationship with, would you think would have the most impact on your relationship? Oh, all right. All right. How many options do I have? Four. It's multiple choice. Okay. Uh, political change mm -hmm. in the person. Mm -hmm. Religious change in the person. Mm -hmm. And we can clarify these as we go along, Tim. Sure, sure. A physical change in the person. Okay. Um, or an emotional change in the person. Okay. Now, political change could be uh, becoming a... Uh, a, a person who has a political stance complete opposite of you right and maybe they started off different and now i guess a political change could be that they have the same politics but suddenly it become intensified right i guess i don't know right but i'm gonna say let's just say that it's changed opposite of you okay so okay. that's that's our example um religion let's say that they became uh, a religion that you're not that you maybe um uh, that's very different from your beliefs okay okay Okay. That's the change. They didn't have that at first. Then all of a sudden, boom, they have it. They they found their religion. Yeah, let's say that they became a... Um, um, much different than yours. Yeah. Okay. Um, or or not just... I mean, I'm going to say it's different from yours, but even... Let's just say that it becomes intensified. Okay. 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 Uh, physical change. Maybe they either gained or lost a lot of weight. Okay. And uh, now we could also say... Uh, physical change could be maybe they were in an accident and they lost their legs. Sure. Or they had a disease and they lost the body part. Right. Or something. Right. So a physical change. Or they, they've gone blind. Possibly. Or sure. Or deaf. Sure. And finally, emotional change. Let's say um, suddenly they maybe became very depressed mm. and started living, you know, uh, struggling with depression for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, became very sad. Maybe they, I don't know, became very manic. Maybe they're very happy or something. I don't know. Or what if they had an injury that caused damage to their frontal lobe and they become a sociopath? That would almost be a physical change, though. But anyway, right. you're, it could be. Mm -hmm. So of those four, which do you think would have the most, for you personally, the most impact on your a relationship that you're in? And let's say it's a long-term relationship. Which would do you think would affect you the most? I'm going to say you can scratch physical off. Uh, if I've already been with somebody for that long, yeah. um, you know, physicality is, is not top of the line anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I would say. I, I agree. Okay, so, so scratch that one off. Mm -hmm. um, then I would say oof, religion, I'm going to go ahead and scratch off next. Reason being is that if you want to become more devout in your religion, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's normally that's more of a private thing, a personal thing. Um, let's say that somebody decides they no longer want to dress um, what that what might be considered inappropriate by their church, mm -hmm. or let's say they no longer want to imbibe alcohol because sure. of their religion, well, a lot of times or the they start praying five times a day, yeah. or they're flogging themselves. It's still them. But off, a lot of times, those kind of things lead to very judgmental or um, attitudes where they want you to change or trying to make you change or like i said judging you or whatever so. that is correct mm -hmm. but but you said if they change so if their religious if their religion gets be becomes more devout whatnot now if they were to start in on me about it yeah that to me would be an emotional change yeah but I, well no they're they're changing they're changing religious uh-huh um what it does to you it doesn't really matter I, i'm just saying it might do all of this stuff to you it but could. i'm just, I'm just saying could. The change for them is religious, so they might. You might have married an atheist, and then that atheist became religious, right? And then, in as part of the religion, starts judging you or change, trying to change you or saying you're going to hell or whatever, right? So you know that would be a big conflict. So that would be, be a, a huge conflict. So. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but if they kept their religion, uh, you know, sure. Uh, on a on a just if they were just a good person, mm -hmm. and and didn't try and push shit on other mm -hmm. people, then some people could do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, then that would be fine. Um, what were the other two? Political, Political and emotional. And emotional. Okay, so after thinking about this a little, little more, I'm going to mm -hmm. say the two big ones. Mm -hmm. I'll narrow it down to see because emotional. I'm also going to say that 
if somebody became very depressed or became very manic mm -hmm. or uh, was suddenly just not the person emotionally that they used to be, you know, that you get them help. Okay. Okay. It doesn't have to end a relationship. Okay. Um, so you're left with political. And, and I'm going to say that it's probably this order. Political would be the worst, then religious, then emotional, and then physical. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. What do you think? Are you agree with me there? I, um, I think it's interesting because I've been through all of those, I believe. Okay. Either on one side or the other. Uh huh. But I definitely have been through, uh, like I've been in relationships where, uh, um, I don't know if it's, I would say there were emotional changes, but definitely emotional uh, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, physical. Well, I've been through. I physical. I've I've been in a relationship where I've gained weight. Yeah. I've been in a relationship where the other person gained weight. Yep. Uh, so physical changes. Uh, don't think. Can't think of anything else. That's happened. Like no, I haven't been in a relationship where there were like major physical changes. But you know, who knows? I mean, even and and I don't. I'm not meaning this as a judge, judgment in any way, or saying it's bad or good. But I mean, let's just say someone has cancer and has to have part of their body removed. Right. I mean, that could be, you know, and it does. It puts uh, suddenly the other person has to deal with it. Right. Too? And, and and again, you know, the whole thing again, like it could mean going blind. Yeah. It could mean going deaf. And now and now you are you've become more uh -huh. or different. You you've become you have a different role to play. Sure. Or or an additional role to play. You're still who you were and you still have those roles as the spouse or the mate or whatever, but now you have an additional role to play in, in order to assist them with their um, inability to see or hear. I um I don't know. I don't think I've been in a relationship where there's been a political change. I've been in a relationship where there's been a religious change, and it was me. It was you. Me. I was the religious change. Mm -hmm. So like, I was in a marriage where when I first got married, I was uh, it's somewhat conservative Southern Baptist. Right. I would say maybe probably more liberal Southern Baptist. Okay. But eh, kind of conservative. Mm -hmm. Evangelical would probably be a safe bet. Okay. And I changed. Yes, I went through a period just completely, totally. Yep. I mean, 100%, almost 180 degrees. Just yep. change. Yep. And that was weird. I have to deal with that. Well, and, and, and how do you think that your mate did with that change? It didn't go very well. <laughs> it never went well. I think there was a time of adap adapting, but uh, she was a, um, a preacher's kid yeah she's pk yeah and so it it didn't go well it didn't go well <laughs> um and so we had you know for, especially at the very beginning it was really really stormy and then toward the end i think that was it, it was never perfect but it did get a little bit better mm -hmm. um I, for me for this list of four the top two are almost equal almost the same yeah because a lot of times religious changes lead to political changes and sometimes yes. political changes lead to religious changes so those are very hand in hand. To me, those would be the two hardest to deal with. Same. Um, physical, eh, I don't care about weight gain. I'm not a, I think I would have a problem more with weight loss. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why, do you be jealous? No. I mean, <laughs> if it's healthy, fine. Right. But I mean, if like, if, let's say, you know, someone I was with had got anorexia and they were like oh, yeah. bone skinny or whatever. Yeah. Um, that would be harder for me to deal with than if someone gained, started gaining weight. They're right. both could be potentially dangerous. Yes. But I mean, if it's healthy, I, I'm okay. And if someone's happy with whatever they are, whatever they're doing, if they're happy and they uh, they like their body, I, I'm i fine. Yeah. I got no problems. Yeah. Uh, emotional, I've been through that. That is a challenge. Emotional challenge is... I mean, emotional changes is a big challenge. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, it really can be a big change or a big challenge when um, the person just fundamentally changes yeah. in the way that they relate to the world. Mm -hmm. They're no longer the person that you enjoy being in the presence of. Because, I mean, you, there's they may still have moments, but uh, 
I went through a period of time with my first husband where I became, uh, it was when I was first being diagnosed with uh, the different mental illnesses that I was being diagnosed with. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, very depressed, slept all the time, or didn't sleep at all, and covered the house in Christmas lights on the inside. Um, you know, just bipolar just all over the place and he didn't know what to do with me yeah he had no idea what to do i wasn't the same person that he knew right. and and at that point it's like okay i can't relate to you the way we've related to each other before or have up until now and i don't know what to do with you yeah um and he tried he tried very hard but it was always a matter of for him anyways and we were young but for him, it was always a matter of, well, let's just get things back to normal. Mm -hmm. Back to normal was his big thing. Yeah. And it was very difficult for him to understand that that's no longer going to work. <laughs> There's no normal. Right. So, um, yeah. So so I, I would I would agree. Okay. I would agree. Well, those are that's just something I was thinking today. I don't know. I think that all of those can be challenges in their own way. Mm hmm um, I would say the older I am, uh, those first two are the are would be the the most difficult. I think when I was younger, the other ones would be more difficult. Sure. But um, yeah. So uh, I would like to say, and this I don't mean for this to come off preachy or kind of um, uh, after school specialish. But, the more you know. Yeah. But um, if any of those things are happening to uh, your marriage and your mate. Get some help. Get some counseling. Go to counseling. Do it. You know, I use I had this thing, uh, I, and I have it. My wife and I went to counseling early on mm -hmm. in our relationship. Every I'm trying to think. I think every marriage <laughs> that I've been <laughs> I've been through, I went to counseling. And that, I mean, I guess it's not a testament to counseling if if all of them ended, but all of them failed. But but it's. You know, the counseling at times kept them alive. Right. They ended for whatever reason. But I just feel like, I always feel like, the, and I always said this to my uh, wife the other day. I said something about we should go to counseling. And she looked at me and was like, why? And I was like, why not? It's it's good. Every once in a while, get some tune-up. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go weekly. No. Just go for a session. Get some questions. Blow off some steam. You know, sure. Um, say, this is bugging me. And have some dialogue. And then that's it. You know, um, do that. I feel like that that's something that every healthy relationship should be a part of. I mean, it should participate in. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. A little, little bit of counseling. Find you a good counselor and go to them. Yep. All right. Uh, there, it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, I, again, you need tools in your life. That's what she just said. Yes. I think she has to go outside. You need tools in your life to manage your life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the tools in your toolbox get worn out Yep. and you have to get new tools Sure. or sometimes new gadgets come out and they work better and you just, you need to fill your toolbox up. You need to keep your toolbox fresh and you need to keep all your tools clean, all that fun junk. And, and you know, and then there are times where as human beings, we just set our toolbox down and forget where we put it. Well, I think too, just uh, with the counselor anyway, sometimes it's just good having a fresh perspective because like, you know, I know my wife. My wife knows me. We kind of know our sides. We know our issues. We know what we're going to say. We know, you know, that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's good just to have one other person to go, have you looked at it this way? And right. then you just kind of go, wow, no, we didn't. Exactly. So it's good. And, and it's, you know, you're not saying there's anything wrong, mm -mm. but it's just like going for an annual checkup with your doctor. You want to make sure there's nothing wrong. Yep. And sometimes it's just reminders. The doctor may go, you're as healthy as a horse. Right. And it's the same thing with a counselor. The counselor may say, your relationship is very healthy. and But it, it's good to be able to sit down and maybe talk a little bit and just check in. get your bearings. Agreed. All right. Agreed. I mean, I'm not going to preach. I just feel like... You're so preachy. You no, know, I just feel like in relationships, sometimes you forget and you coast through relationships and you lose a relationship for some, and I'm going to say it's not fair, but some stupid, silly reason mm -hmm. that you're not aware that it's happening because mm -hmm. it's happened to me several times. And you just wish you had that perspective. Um, I'm kind of in a relationship now where I just feel like that we're both mature enough where we can kind of be aware of that. And, and if we start feeling it, you know, falling apart or going somewhere that we don't want it to go, we can... Talk but about it. Every relationship, every relationship, the longer you're together, the mm -hmm. more comfortable you get, mm -hmm. the more habits you fall into mm -hmm. and, and things that you think that you're doing and things that you think that that are you're maintaining between you and your your partner 
um, you may just be kind of sloughing off on, you know. May, maybe you're not uh, being as romantic as you should be anymore. Maybe you're... Um, Maybe you're forgetting to do the weekly check-ins with your partner. Maybe, yeah. you know, maybe you don't cook dinner as often as you used to. Things that matter to, to your partner, you just think all is hunky-dory, mm -hmm. and maybe it's not. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt to, uh, to like you said, get, a, get another perspective. Yep. Well, let's get another perspective on this beer. Let's uh, kind of wrap up this podcast, and let's talk about the beer that we're doing for our live beer review. What do you think? about mountain, mountain jam. jam i don't see when i see this can uh -huh. this is a misleading can okay this can of beer you 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 think very fruity i think very fruity very berries and, 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 and i and i think berries uh -huh. because there is purple uh -huh. writing yep there is purple sky mm -hmm. um and to me this looks almost like an alaskan scene yep. and there's lots of wild berries that grow in alaska yeah. that are just yummy yummy yep. yummy so that's kind of what i was going for in my brain right it's not what happened nope this is a hoppy citrusy Beer. We've had this beer several times. Yes, we have. <laughs> it tastes like so many beers. That very kind of pineapple-y, I call it pineapple, maybe it's not fair, but very pineapple-y, because it's got that sort of, it, now this is a tiny, tiny bit sweet, but definitely bitter. I say sweet, but not very sweet. It's just got that little tiny bit of sweetness in the back. But mostly it's just beer, pineapple kind of it's beer. It's just beer. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably not even going to finish mine. I will, t look at this. I will I say, as much as I'm not, it's not my favorite beer. I'm just thirsty, and I, I drink and a lot of it. you drink way more than I have. Yeah, and, and I, I have a couple times I was just like, all right, it's not that bad. Yeah. But I, I don't. I would want it. I don't like know. I'm going to give it a two. I'll go two five, which is my kind of. Uh, that's your average. Well, it's just, it, it's that's kind of my starting point. And it's like, if it really sucks, it'll fall below that. And if yeah. it's even better, it kind of goes a little bit above. Yeah. If it just stays in the valley there, then we'll just go two five. And that's sort of what happened there. It's just kind of boring for yeah, me. And, I and totally gosh, agree. you know, I hate saying bad things like that about beer. What if, what if they're listening? Well, I hate it too, but I also, I'm also the kind of person where I'm just like, I know everybody likes different things and someone may absolutely love this beer. Yeah. I know that we've had friends that have said, drink this beer, you're going to love it. And then we try it and we're like, that's not that's good at all. That's not good. Yeah. 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 Anyways, yeah, two for me, two and a half for you. And uh, again, that's Mountain Jam. Yep. And that's from Southbound in Savannah, Georgia. Give it a try. See what you think. Don't let us. Don't let us determine it for you. Keep you from it. Right. All right. So we're going to uh, wrap it up. I think uh, uh, several people in this room have to potty. Yep. And uh, so we're going to wrap it up. But uh, hey. Stay in touch with us at thisepicdisaster at gmail.com. Visit us on Facebook at This Epic Disaster. I can't even say the words. No, you can't. And uh, thisepicdisaster.com. We're on there. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, all the places where you find people who are doing whatever people do. Before you go, uh -huh. what do bees do if they want to use public transport? Uh, buzz. They wait at a buzz stop. All right, people, we'll see you uh, this time next week. Okay, bye. Bye. This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast.